someone roars, Bobby scores at the good old hockey game. Oh, the good old hockey game is the best game you can name. And the best game you can name is the good old hockey game. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Puck and Country. On today's show, we welcome professional hockey player slash country singer Mark Ledlin. Mark, how are you doing today? I'm good. Thank you. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Thanks for asking. Um, okay, so let's get into background first. So where are you from? So the long story is I was born and raised in Germany. Um, yeah. My family moved back to Vancouver because my dad's from Vancouver when I was five. But I currently reside in the summer in the off season in Vancouver. How do you like living in Vancouver? I heard it's gorgeous. Uh, it's unbelievable. But this year we haven't had, I mean, the sun's coming out now, but for the first like two months I was home, we had nothing but rain. So, I mean, that's what you get for living in the rainforest. Oh, that's crappy. I mean, I heard a lot that it rains in uh, Vancouver, but honestly, I'm in Toronto and the weather here has not been the greatest either until now. But hopefully since summer officially begun, I think last week, uh, we should be good for good weather. And now, like I said, professional hockey player. So when did you start playing? Did you always grow, like have a love for hockey? Because as you were mentioning prior to the interview, your father played hockey. So was that kind of just thrown on you at a young age? I mean, you could say I was born into it in a sense. Like I was yeah. on skates. I was on the ice before I could walk, just like being on my dad's shoulders after the games and stuff like that. But I mean, the second I started walking was the same time I was on the ice. And like when you're young, you like, cause a blade's so thin. Um, I actually had these little booties that would go on your shoes and they have two blades on each side. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I was on the ice and you honestly couldn't get me off. And now we still can't get you off cause you're still playing. <laughs> Still can't get me off, so I'm still playing. Yeah. So it's my sixth year pro now, um, and I'm completely blessed to be doing playing a sport as my profession. Yes, honestly, playing. I wish I was a guy sometimes because you. I would honestly take up. I swear every single sport, but mostly probably hockey. Like to play a sport for a career is unbelievable. And that's like, even for sports broadcasters, we get to talk about sports. So I mean, like, it's the best of both worlds, uh, these two careers, eh? It's, it's unbelievable. I mean, Europe, Europe's pretty far ahead yeah. as opposed to North America. Like men and women's sports both give everyone a chance to wow. create an income through what they love doing. I mean, I've met countless girls that have gone to the NCAA and then they go to Europe and they make a killing as a living. And then, but it's not just hockey, it's volley. They, they love athletics over there. So you have volleyball, mm -hmm. handball, basketball. Every country in Europe has at least two leagues that everybody can play in. Wow, I honestly did not know that. That's amazing. We should totally have that here. And I mean, we do have uh, like leagues for females, but you, you can't live off of that. Like you, you I cannot. mean, it's one thing they're super head in is that like the moment, because I'm not an import because I was born and raised there. So I have a general passport, mm -hmm. but you're treated legitimately. Like, like you won the lottery, you get an apartment, you get a car, you get a salary, all your health care is covered. Your flights covered. It's like a paid vacation, but you got, you kind of got to go to work at the rank or whatever you're doing for a job. That's not even work. That's not even work. Well, I, in a sense it is work. Like you kind of got to turn on a light switch when you go to the rank or like go to the field or whatever. But I mean, you're there for three hours and then you have the rest of the day to go travel Europe. It's amazing. That sounds like such a dream, Mark. That honestly sounds like a dream. And you're one lucky guy that gets to live that dream. One, yeah. of, the, one of the many few. One of the many few. Exactly. Um, now, what's one thing that you learned from hockey that you've carried into your day-to-day -day life? I mean, I grew up in a locker room and when I was, when I could walk, I'd be in the locker room with my dad. And one thing you see through any sport, through anything, even jobs back here, like you're with them so much. You're with the guys nine months of the year. You're on the road for 10 hours on a bus. It's literally like a second family. And one thing I took completely and put in my everyday life is that like, it doesn't take a lot to be a decent human being. Mm -hmm. And when you're with somebody all the time, whether it's your friends, your coworkers, or even if somebody on the street, like, if you look out for somebody, that's going to go a lot further than just sitting back and doing nothing. So, I mean, just like yep. being almost like a brother or a sister for everyone you kind of meet, it goes a long way. 
We need more kind people in this world. We need more people that would lend a helping hand because we've been through quite the ringer uh, the last two years and it's taken a toll on everybody. So it's nice uh, when people are just there to be there for people. Um, and now Mark, let's dive in to the season. NHL season just came to a wrap. We yeah. all know who won. It was the Colorado Avalanche. But hold up. I have to say this. You're a Tampa fan. So, okay. First of all, I hate you right off the bat for that. <laughs> that just no. Um, but were you disappointed uh, that they lost? Or were you like, you know what? Colorado truly did deserve this win. No, that was one thing, like, I grew up like a Tampa fan. Like I wasn't, I wasn't a Canucks fan. I wasn't a hometown okay. kid fan. I was like, yeah. I loved Martin St. Louis. I loved Le Cavalier. And when Steven Stamkos kind of went to Tampa, he always used a red stick. And I was like, this guy is the coolest guy ever. And he's a right hand. He sits on the half all for like power play. And I was like, this is my favorite player. And I always grew up like watching Tampa. And then, but, like, in the recent years, when you're around hockey so much, like, it's, like, you don't talk work when you go home. So I tried, like, my best not to watch as much hockey this year. But I still, like, playoffs, I'm still a big fan. But I honestly thought, like, Minnesota looks so good. Edmonton looked good. Like, Calgary mm -hmm. looked good. And then I was, like, watching the Avs during the season, I was, like, these guys are going to absolutely sweep any team that goes into the playoffs. So going back to the beginning of the season, when you were watching, did you think that the Avs would win the Stanley Cup? Or did you have, like, maybe another team in mind of winning the Stanley Cup? No, it was between – it was honestly Colorado, Tampa, and I thought Minnesota was going to do really well. Okay. Um, they all – like, they all picked up guys in the offseason. And, like, Kemper coming from – I think he was in L.A. Um, the year before. He was in Colorado, but, like, or no, he was in LA before. And then I was, I watched him during the season. Like we were watching games on the bus and I was like, man, their goaltending looks good. They have McKinnon, you got Landis Cobb, mm -hmm. you got Ranson. And like all these guys were so good that we all looked at each other on the bus. We're like, these guys are a wagon. There's no chance these guys are going to lose in a seven game series. Like what I think they lost up to the finals. They lost three games in the first three yeah. series. And it's like, how do you, how do mm -hmm. you, go against a team like that and be like, Hey boys, we're like, we're going to, and the fact they started off at home, I was like, yeah, these guys have it in the bag. Yep. I was not surprised when the Colorado avalanche pulled out the W last night. Uh, not at all, but you know, the team that I had going up against them who was Toronto. <laughs> it was Toronto. Oh my God. Anyways. Um, that's why I hate I hate Tampa. I'm just I'm just a really salty Leafs fan. Let's put it like that. But that series, the Toronto. Since you're a Tampa fan, now I can chat about it. But that series, Tampa against Toronto. Did you actually think Tampa was gonna win, or did you feel like Toronto stood a chance? Because we did. We were up three to two in the series, and then the Leafs pulled their stupid Leafs. Stuff that they always do every single year. And then just, anyways, but did you think that you guys had it in the bag or did you think we were going to pull it strong with that one? Well, I mean, like, coming from a hockey standpoint, like, in, like, being in the same situation, like, going into playoffs, mm -hmm. when you get a guy that comes off, like, a 60-goal season, you get Marner, like, 90-plus yeah. points. Like, these guys had such a star-studded top six that you're like, oh, like – Yep. I, I wouldn't see why they couldn't beat Tampa. Like, Tampa went back to back, like COVID year than last year. Mm -hmm. And you're like, okay, hey, these guys, in a sense, like you don't, you never take your foot off the gas as a team. But like, I knew Tampa wasn't going to come out and just, nobody was going to roll over, especially at that level. Nobody's going to roll over because everyone's got bonuses on the line. Everyone's got money on the line. And that kind of changes some stuff. But when you have like Tampa's depth in their team, yeah, just yeah. outweighed Toronto. Mm -hmm. In a sense, like, I mean, Toronto's cap is insane. Like, how many guys they have over making $10 million. It's like, I don't even, I, I don't know the stat off of hand, but I don't think it's a team's ever won with a player making over $10 million. And oh, I didn't know that. To, I'm going to look into that. Yeah, to me, it's like, I think, I think McKinnon, 
going like the avalanche McKinnon took like yeah. less money for them to bring guys in mm-hmm. and I see that as being like hey that team's gonna be a lot better same yeah. with Tampa like but Tampa had a huge budget as well and like I'm not a huge fan of the role in the NHL where like salary cap only counts during the regular season because last year I think it was last year when Kucherov got hurt he came back in the playoffs and they're like eight million dollars over the salary cap yeah. And it's like yeah. bringing in a ringer that hasn't played in two months. All of a sudden, he's been on the ice for the last month. You know exactly what happened. They didn't let him play. They yeah. let him practice full contact. And then playoffs comes in, he's sharp, fresh, and then they absolutely swept the NHL. Mm. So, I mean, when they went up against Toronto, I knew it was going to be a good series. I knew it was going to go to seven. But, no, I thought when Toronto was up 3-2, I thought they were going to take it out this year. But they just kind of fumbled the bag again. Yeah. I mean, it was a really good series, though. It kept you on your toes for sure. And, you know, one player that I'm really happy um, we'll have to talk about is Nazem Kadri. I mean, he finally won a Stanley Cup. Uh, did you see what he said? Um, yeah, his- anybody who said I'm a liability <laughs> in the playoffs can kiss my ass. I love it. Absolutely love it. That was amazing because so many oh gosh I was surrounded by so many people that were constantly at Kadri but I always stuck by I'm like I love this play. like I love this guy I'm like yeah he got suspended in the playoffs and last year and I think even the year before he kind of screwed us on that one but I mean he's still a, a solid player all around uh but, but he, I'm really, what? he brings something to the table that are not a lot of guys like he's so he's so skilled yes. Yeah. But he also brings that gritty component. Like, you got mm-hmm. McKinney, you got Ranton, you got yep. Landis Cog, who are all, like, studs in the NHL. Yeah. And then you bring in this other guy who could be a top six, top three forward on the other team. But then he went in and played a role and, like, came back after his injury and scored that OT winner or that last yes. goal. That yeah, I mean, questionable, but I understand the call, like, from a hockey standpoint, that the sixth guy wasn't in the play at all. He was changing. But, uh, no, like, good for him to kind of, like, shove that back in the back of everyone's mouths and Mm -hmm. like take my name out of your mouth yep Kadri brings heart he plays with heart that's the thing when it like he played with a broken thumb didn't it wasn't it was a broken thumb like I'm sorry could you imagine Matthews doing that that would never happen like there's no chance Marner doing that no I mean like that team to me and like my opinion they don't like they don't have that drive to win yet. Like I don't, they just don't play with emotion and heart. They just play to play and like, okay, if we lose, we lose. Like William Nylander is one of those players where I honestly, I'm not even afraid to say this. I can't stand his personality. Like I seriously cannot stand his personality. When you watch this guy play, it's like he does not care um, to play at all. He's just there. They're making big bucks on the team. And I mean, yeah, we're so skilled. T- uh, Toronto is so, so, so skilled, but I mean, I don't know. I honestly don't even know when it's going to happen for the Leafs, but hopefully soon. People are already saying, like, next year. I'm like, yeah, I don't think so. I don't think it's, so. It's a different kind of mind. Like, don't get me wrong. They have probably the most swagger in the league. Like, okay. their style's okay. unbelievable. Yeah, 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 whatever. That has nothing to do with it, but go on. <laughs> but, okay. like, there's a point where, honestly, like, playing a gritty game and wearing a team yeah. down – outweighs any kind of style or swagger you bring to the table like yeah, yeah Marner's sick Matthews is sick mm-hmm. well like Nylander's gross but like at what point like no none of them are gonna play with broken thumbs like no yeah. they're not they're just not but I digress from that whole situation because let's just let's just not even go in there but anyways okay so going back to you so hockey you're a professional hockey player. And like I said before, you are a singer, sir. Okay, so what made you transition from a hockey career to a country music career? And also, did you get chirped by your hockey friends? So actually a funny story about like, so we'll start off with like how I got into music. Okay. But um, yeah, so I was in, I played my junior career in Berlin. Um, just because Europe gives you an opportunity, like you can play your first pro game at 16. I played my first pro game at 17 over here. You have to be 17 even to get drafted. Hmm. Um, so like for junior guys, you get a lot more opportunities. So I got blessed with like the chance to go play in Berlin, which is an unbelievable city. And then I kind of went through this like down period. Like I moved away when I was 15. I didn't see my friends. I didn't see my family. And like being that young, it's different than like building with a family. I lived on my own. I cooked on my own, did all my chores, whatever. 
And so like, like everybody else, I kind of sang in the shower, sang in the car. My friends were like, man, you don't suck. Let me tell you that. (laughs) And I was like, ah, what? It's just a car. And so I was like, I I was in a really low period and like my mental health wasn't there and just hockey wasn't doing it for me. So I was like, I my dad played guitar. I never, he tried to teach me, but like, I could never learn from him. (laughs) It's like any other saying is father and son can't teach each other. And so I ended up like one day I was like, I got so much time as a hockey player. So I went to like our local grocery store and they had a sale on this kid's guitar. It was just this phony cheap piece of junk. And I was like, to heck with it like i'm gonna buy this so like i bought this kid's guitar for like 40 bucks got like an online tuner on my phone and then like i started learning four chords because four chords you could play a thousand songs yeah. over twice mm-hmm. and so i did that and like like anything else there's a ten thousand rule hour that like you won't be a master until you do that so i would sit there calluses on my hands bleeding and i'm like all right like i'm getting better slowly and like learning how to finger pick and whatever and then Lo and behold, I started singing Fast Car by Tracy Chapman. It was the first song I, like, I ever played and sung together. And I was like, man, like, it could be worse. It could be worse. Like, I really love this. And so fast forward, like, two years, I really, like, started to hone my craft and, like, tried to write some music. And, like, any new musician, like, the first songs, the first hundred songs you write are junk. Yeah. Like, they're not good. Like, they kind of sound corny, cheesy, whatever. And then like a day hits and like something starts to feel more natural. Like I don't have to look at the chords anymore and stuff like that. And that's when like writing music really became an outlet to like my emotion and all my mental health stuff. Because like with hockey or whatever, there comes this stigma that we're all tough, rugged guys. And like, don't get me wrong, I'm missing (laughs) teeth and everything. Like I'm part of that group, but there's also this stigma that we don't have emotions or like a way to cope with our feelings and for me I really dove headfirst into music and like found that listening to a song is a lot more than just using your ears it's your heart it's your eyes it's how you feel Mm -hmm. it's it's all of our emotions all of our sensitivity and so for me like I never really got any backlash it was just always something kind of cool that I did and like the guys loved it they would come over we'd have a barbecue and I'd hop on the strings and play some songs um but the funniest moment probably was two years ago we're in playoffs and we took this game to like game five against the number one seed. And I look over and me being the idiot I am, I just start chirping their bench. Like it's nothing else. And their entire bench just starts going, yeah, just start playing guitar again, start doing this. And this is after I like appeared on the voice, like the German TV show, the sing show. Mm -hmm. And I just had to laugh. And I was like, man, like you can't rip my hockey game. So you're going to start ripping my personal life. Like I got a good kick out of that. I got thick skin. So I took, I took it with a grain of salt and laughed about it. We ended up winning that, that game, but uh, it was a good joke that the boys like to hear in the dressing room. That's a cherry on top. At least you guys won that game. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But music is so healing. It, it really is, and especially country music. I don't know what it is about that uh, genre, but it's just – it just brings you in and it warms your heart when you listen to it. I mean, that can take you from a really shitty spot in your life to a really happy place in your life. I mean, rap's good. Don't get me wrong. If you like rap, sure, go ahead. But just country music is just totally different. Don't you agree? Definitely. There's so much. I mean, rap kind of has this it's, it's genre thing. they stick to. Yeah. I listen to everything. I'm a big music fan in general. So like mm-hmm. you throw something on the ox, I'm going to jam to it. But for me, I really resonated with country just because, like, yeah. there's so much. I'm like singer songwriter and country is what I resonate most with because, like, mm-hmm. that's the most like heartfelt writing and stuff like mm-hmm. that. And I take a lot of pride in how I write my music. I write it all about my personal life. Um, and like, don't get me wrong, I am a. I didn't grow up on a farm. I didn't grow up in the country, but I don't think that stopped me from make pursuing country music. Like, like anything, I think everybody can try something. Yeah. And, I almost say to my friends, like, you know what, like, I want to take a little bit, there's a saying, like, take the, you can't take the country out of the girl, but you can take the girl out of the country. I'm, I love wearing New Balance, I wear Lululemon, like, I don't own a cowboy hat, which I got to get on, Um, but, like, I wanted to take country music and still make it country, but, like, also incorporate, like, you can be from a city and still write heartfelt country music. Mm -hmm. You're not wrong. You're completely right. I mean, 
that's such a stereotype. I feel like you can only write country songs. You can only be a country artist if you're actually from like Tennessee, for example, from Georgia, like from somewhere out there where you grew up on a farm with horses and chickens and all, all that stuff. It's like, that's not true because so many people are country singers are from like cities too. Like even from Toronto, Woodbridge, I live in Woodbridge. I don't know. Have you ever heard of Woodbridge before? No, never. Okay. Woodbridge is like this very Italian um, community in uh, Vaughan, which in Toronto. But anyways, there's a girl who like lives here who wants to be a country singer. And it's like, she's posting, she's working. And it's like, you would never think that because of where she grew up. Like she grew up in a suburb, like, you know what I mean? But there's just so many people that are coming out from like cities. Like, I don't know. And country music is so addicting too. I feel like, and it's such a genre that you can grasp um, easy. And like you said, write songs. You can write from your heart um, with country music. And all you need is four chords. Four chords, that's four it. Four chords, that's how a song is made. Like it. I was born in a small skiing village in the south of Germany in the Alps. Like that's you really nice. think that's where country music is made? Yeah. We have Oktoberfest music for crying out loud. That's what we listen to. And drinking songs. And like, I want to do incorporate from like where I am in my life where I got to grow up in Europe I got to grow up in Vancouver and like I may not be super country but to hell I could throw some hay bales I could work a farm like I'm pretty nose to the grindstone kind of guy but I also like wearing yeah. New Balance 550s I like wearing yeah. Lululemon and so yeah, yeah. I just wanted to be I, I want to be myself through thick and thin and that's how I want to be perceived and now after your hockey career let's just kind of skip forward a little bit would you ever consider actually gunning for um, like a career in music? Would you ever like think about moving to Nashville um, and trying out a career there? Uh, don't get me wrong. I love hockey, but if I had the opportunity to do music full time, I would quit my day job right now and be a country musician. I feel like it's in the works for you, Mark. I honestly feel like that's in the works for you because let's just chat. The song that you just released, Drink About You. Dude, that's a banger. I'm just going to flat out say it. Um, tell us the story behind the song. And it's already gotten so many good reviews and added to so many playlists, which I saw your TikTok. You were like naming a bunch of t um, playlists that you like. And Spotify, you got over 40,000 uh, listens on that song on Spotify. So it's taking off. So what's the story? Let's talk about it. So that song came about as it was a girl I saw, um, like we'll never name drop, but like, yeah, like kind of last summer thing. And I wrote the song just as like, it started off as a heartbreak anthem. Mm -hmm. And like many songs do, you're heartbroken. Yeah. Like you had the, the hard eyes for this person, whatever. And then I, it, for me, it's always tough because I, and I tell people when I'm home, I'm like, I come with an expiry tag. Like you get the summer and then I go, I go back to Germany and play hockey. So for me, dating's always been tough, but uh, you know, this, this girl was a little different, but it started off as a heartbreak anthem. And then I was like, you know what? Like I'm tired of being upset about how things didn't work out or like what she's doing now. Like, you know, when you go out to a bar and like, you're kind of like grieving, however you want to do it. Yeah. And you like, you have a drink and you're like, God, like, why can't I get them out of my head? Like, so I took the song and I was like, I want to have this feeling of like, I'm fine. I'm moved on. But like, when you drink, do you drink about me? And like, do you remember, does the new guy do all the same stuff I used to do? Does he treat you the same? Does he know like your favorite spot to go? Does he know your whiskey sour side? And it's almost like a, by the way, I remember all this, but does he know it too? But then in the song, it's like, it's like, oh, well, drinking's all you got left of me. And that's like, a, you know what? I'm gone. I'm never coming back. But if you want to remember anything about me, all you got is those drinks going to bring back those memories. So it was like a, it's like a better off anthem now. Has this girl like heard this song? Do you know or no idea? You got no, no idea. communication with her, but I'm that sure she's heard it. I'm Interesting. And now you also posted a song on TikTok, which now I feel like is about her as well. Um, it didn't have a name. I don't believe it had a name, but I was listening to it. And you kind of said in the beginning that um, this is about a, like, this is a song about um, someone who like has to go, go away. Like you need, it ends like, how do I say this? How am I I'm wording this so wrong right now? But you know, when you're like with somebody and then like, you know, that moment has to come to an end and you have to like go away. It's like kind of a summer fling type of thing. Do you remember? Oh my gosh, I'm so bad at trying to. So I think out. I know. So the song is called Slower Than You Planned. 
Is that what it's called? Yeah, so what that song's gonna be coming out uh, this summer as well. I got four songs ready to release uh, this summer for everybody. That's and amazing, then, okay, yeah. okay. So that song, I'm, I'm super excited. I don't wanna give too much away, but it's more or less like, you know, everyone kind of comes home from university, from work, from school, from wherever they are, mm -hmm. back to their small little town. And then just somehow, somehow happens, you kind of get in the summer fling. And you know, you know it's gonna come to an end, but like, why not let August kind of do its course and like run out? And then you guys kind of leave on terms where like, we didn't end, but like time just kind of took us apart because we didn't have like enough of it in the summer. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that one's gonna be like a end the summer kind of thing, August release. That's a smart time to release that sort of song. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, very smart. And now Boots and Hearts. So you applied for the Emerging Artist Showcase. How excited are you? I, I already applied and I'm just now hoping you. I get some positive feedback from it. I'm sure, will you attend Boots and Hearts even if you're not there for the Emerging Artist Showcase? It's a little bit tough. Like I'm in Vancouver and like I would love to go, but I, like I'm going to Rocket River and like, you know, all okay. these things cost money. And so yeah, I'm not made of it yet. But um, I would love to go, but like, I already know my friends said, like, if you made it to like the top two and you're on that stage, we would fly out and be there. Yeah. Well, people keep uh, reposting his video. We got to get Boots and Hearts to notice you, Mark, because that song was killer. And I can't wait to hear all the new songs you have up your sleeve. That's amazing. I'm so pumped. And I'm sure all of your fans are pumped as well. No, I, I'm that was one thing, like, I kind of did singer-songwriter music before, but, like, I really wanted to do country for a long time. And to have this kind of feedback and, like, to be featured on Playlist by Spotify and to have, yeah. like, I think we're, we're closing in on, like, almost 90,000 streams between Apple Music and Spotify. Crazy. In, like, the first, I think, 10 days. Yeah. And for me, like, I was almost just in shock looking at these numbers and, like, how much people really resonated and liked the song. And I, I get messages every day, like, I haven't stopped playing this. Like, I might be a thousand of those plays. And, like, for me, that, that just warms my heart because I just want to make music that people can enjoy and, like, resonate to. Mm -hmm. And I've never experienced, like, that exactly what you were describing, like, the meaning behind Drink About You. But I sing that song like I have experienced that. <laughs> like, I can just, like, grasp onto it and blast it in my car and just go on. And I'm sure that's what everybody is doing. Honestly, Mark, you have such a career ahead of you. Uh, don't ever stop. Let me just put it like that. Keep on going uh, because I'm sure sooner or later you're going to get to where you want to be and you're going to be so, so, so happy. No, I appreciate that. Thank you. No problem, Mark. And thank you so much for hopping on uh, Puck and Country. We love it. Puck hockey and country music. Well, what more can you ask for? I swear that's like the two best things to talk about. I don't know. A full set of teeth wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. <laughs> okay, wait, quickly. How did that happen? Was it a stick? Was it a puck? Was it a punch? How did that happen? Uh, no, so it was in practice. After I got accepted to be on The Voice, I went to practice the next day. And we were oh. doing a drill. It was just like a dump the puck in, go play five on five in the zone. And I beat my defenseman in the corner and like shoulder faked one way, went the other way and his stick came in and this tooth got knocked out. And then half of this tooth just got completely knocked out as well. I feel like you shouldn't tell anybody that happened in practice. Let's probably say that happened like during a game. No, I always say you should, you should see the other guy or I always bring oh, it at the okay. block while I was a barbecue salesman. How does that go? Just okay. kind of like, I go, it works really well, to be honest, because they're like, oh, you definitely play hockey. I was like, no, I'm in competitive barbecue sales. And like, that gets really, really aggressive. I don't think I would buy that if I ever heard you say that. But... Of course you wouldn't. But it's just the fact that because like, and hockey players don't have the best rep and like musicians don't have that much of a better rep. So I'm just trying to okay. differentiate myself at the bar. Fair enough. Uh, would you ever get like an actual tooth, like, secured and put in or do you have fun taking it out and putting it back in no so i mean the tooth is kind of a party trick this is my shotgun tool like i'll take it out and shotgun a beer with it oh um God. but it's also like from the response on tiktok i think i might have to keep it out when i play live because that's part of my identity now i feel yeah fair enough Fair enough. And you also posted that TikTok where it's like, Gator needs his gas, you punk ass bitch. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> that was like, 
That was hilarious. That was hilarious. I feel like you can play around a lot with uh, that tooth. <laughs> That's the icebreaker there is. And the best game you can name.